And it will be Iowa kicking to the Golden Gophers in those shiny helmets. First time that they have worn those this season. Demetrius Douglas back deep to receive it from Miguel Racinos. And off we go here from Minneapolis. And he's going to do the fair catch to bring it out to the 25 yard line. New rule this year. And you know, the first couple of weeks, the games we worked, we didn't see anybody use it. Now it seems like just about every that ball gets close to that goal line. There goes the hand up. Ball's going back to the 25 yard line. Obviously, a rule that was put in place to reduce injuries in the kicking game. So here comes Zach Anikstad. Mentioned the ankle not 100%. Both of his interceptions he threw last two weeks ago, I should say, against Maryland. Well, you look at the strength of this offensive team from Minnesota. It's with the wide receiver. So I think you're going to see a lot of big time explosive shots downfield. And extend the true freshman has the arm. But on the first play he's going to defer to the ground game and Muhammad Ibrahim. Ibrahim returned last week after missing a pair with a left leg injury as we take a look at our auto owners insurance impact players when the Golden Gophers have the football. Well, I think it's Tyler Johnson. I talked about the wide receivers. This guy is electric. And then A.J. Espineza, you know, he doesn't even start. Four sacks, he leads the conference in sacks. Yeah, Espineza only had 21 snaps against Wisconsin, but had 13 tackles, four quarterback hurries. He is a force to be reckoned with for that Iowa defense. This time, Anikstead will throw, and it is incomplete. Rashad Bateman, one that he should have caught, the true freshman, instead, third and six. Yeah, I like what they do right here. They go, and it's well covered, but they get it to Bateman, and you know what they'll say? You got to hold on to that ball. That's been Tyler Johnson's problem. He is a dynamic receiver, but he's had a problem holding on to the football. Johnson is their leader out wide. Bateman, though, a kid that they are really, really excited about from Tifton, Georgia. Now, Iowa is not a big blitz defense. They like to play coverage and they like to put pressure with only four guys. But here comes the blitz. And the blitz is coming from both sides. And Anikstead has taken down Anthony Nelson with his third sack of the season. Well, I can tell you that's a departure from Phil Parker, what he normally does. You're going to see them tee up. And here comes 27 out of the secondary. And man, a lot of pressure right off the bat. And I asked, you know, Phil Parker, I said, you're playing a true freshman quarterback. You know, you want to pressure him when you do. He said, well, pressure really isn't in our DNA, except for the four guys. Yeah, they brought the pressure there, though, and got to him. And now we have our first flag of the game. Ball start. Offense number 36, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Referee John O'Neill backing Minnesota up five more. And you saw in that blitz, number 27, that's Amani Hooker. Who plays safety for them and he's a local guy. He's right here from Minneapolis at a Park Center High School. Did not get an offer though from the Golden Gophers playing with a little chip on his shoulder out there today. Punt from Jacob Herbers. And it will be good field position. Speaking of Hooker, he's the one that comes up to field the punt for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Nate Stanley's going to start at the 47 yard line right near midfield after a 34 yard punt. Well you know that that's the whole mentality if you win the toss which Iowa did and you defer you rely on a kicking game to put them back deep in their territory and then play good defense force them to punt and now the field position battle and early in this game swings in Iowa's favor. There's Kirk Ferentz said he really thought his team took advantage of the bye week and they are fresh and ready to go after that loss at home to Wisconsin two weeks ago. An early look at the right arm of Nate Stanley and wide open Nick Easley. Pitch and catch all the way to the 40 yard line for a gain of 13. Well you know the thing about it Iowa wants to run but if you load the box in other words, you put more hats up there than they have blockers. You take a safety and put them down. They're going to throw the football, and that's what you saw right there. And they want to get those wide receivers more involved. We talked about the tight ends and all the catches they've had. And here, Ivory Kelly Martin swallowed up in the backfield by a combination of Winston Delano Bodere and Thomas Barber. Well, here comes the zone. They're a zone football team. You can see the right tackle. He bounces off his man and lets inside penetration 
You've got to secure the line of scrimmage first before you go to the second level. Right tackle did not do that in that case. Delata Bodere, his second tackle for a loss this season, and it makes it second and 12. Still Ivory Kelly Martin, the sophomore in the backfield, standing to the left of Stanley. And complete another really easy pitch and catch this time to Brandon Smith. It'll be third and short as we take a look at the auto owners insurance impact players. Well, Torin Young, the one of the running backs, they got three good running backs. He's their leading rusher. They want to run the football. And on defense, Blake Cashman, former walk-on playing linebacker. This guy makes a lot of plays. Third and four officially. And the ball just inside the 35 yard line from here it would be about a 51 yard field goal but I was not thinking about that right now. Handoff inside Kelly Martin he's not going to get there. He needed four he got two so go for it here. Well if, if you have a great field goal kick you have a confidence in you go for the field goal if not go for it on fourth down. Racinos, his career long is 48, and that's right around what this would be, but they're going to keep the offense on the field. You saw that third down play by the Gophers, really good. You saw the safety come down real fast and play one. Remember that lately, later for play action pass. And we might remember this play later in the game, too, a big one. Stanley rolling, throwing, completing, first down Iowa. Amir Smith Marset, the sophomore, with his first catch of the game, and it's a big one. Yeah, Iowa gives that go for defense a lot to think about. You know, 87, which we talked about, he lined up one side, he, he motioned the other. Everybody worries about him, then they come out with break contain the other side. Good route. Soft corner, went for the pitch and catch throw. So already catches by Easley and Smith Marset. Two of the wideouts are trying to get the ball to more often this week. For Stanley, three completions to three different receivers. Minnesota rushing four. Nearly intercepted Terrell Smith, the freshman. Could have had a pick six. Well, I tell you, if he would have picked that under, no one would have touched him. And you talk about Terrell Smith, the freshman out of Georgia, and they think this guy is going to be really good. And he baited Nate Stanley into that throw. He backpedaled, planted, and came up. He's one of eight true freshmen that has played all four games for Minnesota. A lot of youth on both sides of the ball. Hawkinson goes to the backfield. And the handoff to Kelly Martin. Just shy of the 20, stopped by Thomas Barber. Minnesota rushing defense, they were good weeks one to three, and then Maryland two weeks ago, 315 yards. Yeah, the first three games, they were spectacular. Now, granted, they really didn't play any teams that liked to run the football. They played Maryland, and man, they gave up 350 yards. A lot of big plays, an 80-yard run, a 60-yard run, two more for over 20, very atypical of the go for defense. They're hoping to get back to normal form here this afternoon. Third down and seven. Pressure coming. Completion to Kelly Martin out of the backfield. Down to the five yard line. Jacob Huff with a touchdown saving tackle first and goal. Well, you'll see it right here. They take the snap out of the shotgun. They got a little game in the middle, but one of the, I, I think that might have been Carter Coughlin tried to hold him up and he got run over. And that's why he's wide open. It's not easy to plow over Coughlin like that, but Kelly Martin did it. This time with a fullback Ross leading the way. Kelly Martin gets it inside the five before he's stopped by O.J. Smith, a gain of two. Yeah, you talked about Ivory Kelly Martin. He missed uh, weeks two and three, so we know that he's back healthy now. And they've got they like their running backs. And when I talked to Rob Smith, the defensive coordinator for Minnesota, he liked all those running backs. He said they're great zone 
runners and they can put their foot in the ground and make the cutback run. And they have options in that backfield but so far number 21 has been the go to guy. Over the middle top. and guess what it's a tight end T.J. Hawkinson his first touchdown catch of the season. And the folks who have made the trek from Iowa City enjoying the early lead. Well, the four previous tight end touchdown passes, coach, were all to Noah Fant, but Hawkinson now getting involved. I told you they had two good tight ends. Boy, do they ever. PAT is good by Racinos. You know, they had six passes on that drive to four runs. So Iowa has a fair catch is called establishing the run game as we go to Mike Hall in Chicago for a studio update. And here it's seven nothing Iowa as Minnesota gets another shot on offense. Zach Anikstead will defer on the handoff to Ibrahim and Ibrahim is quickly tackled that Iowa defense having none of it no gain. Uh, Brian Ferentz, six passes that last drive, four runs. Are you surprised? Yeah, at all? I really am. Every time I've ever talked to Kirk Ferentz or Brian Ferentz, they say their offense always starts with the run. And you think about the problems that Minnesota had in their last outing with big runs. I really thought they'd really test the, test the run, but it's a shocking for me that he's the offensive coordinator. I remember when he was playing offensive line for him. <laughs> 35 year old offensive coordinator he played offensive line for his dad from 2001 to 2005 and now commanding the offense and extend and he overthrows that in the direction of Tyler Johnson had a little time just nobody to throw to yeah well you know he knew he was going to try to go deep early but let's watch right here and he, he was looking deep but you know that both receivers fell down you know it's awful hard when you're a quarterback and you're back there and you have pretty decent protection you say uh oh where'd they go and those are two good receivers that we've already discussed in Johnson and Bateman but they're not going to do, do you know much what, good you know what the there? coaching point on that is pick up your feet that's what you say I mean you can't just trip and fall out there see if they can stay upright on third and ten. And instead off his back foot trying to dump it underneath and a big loss back to the 20 five yards in the wrong direction tackle by Parker Hesse. Well you know the thing about it is you know there's no secrets I talked about that Minnesota have to do a lot better job protecting the, the rush of Iowa so you know you're either going to go with some max protection you go with some draws or screens and if you're going to keep your ends rushing hard which they did there to protect against the screen you take the inside guys and come out awful good defense there by Phil Parker defensive coordinator Minnesota five yards in the wrong direction through two drives minus five in the yardage category and that punt will roll down inside the 40 yard line Nate Stanley much better weeks three and four and last drive five of five yeah well I can just tell you that you know anticipation what they're going to do in this game for him to come out and throwing the way he did you don't think that Ken O'Keefe the quarterback coach and Kirk Ferentz and you know here it is it's during a timeout everybody else on the offense is on the sideline the five linemen are right out in the middle of the field hey there's no coaching up just go block those guys it's that simple. Yeah Larrick Jackson Ross Reynolds Keegan Renner Dalton Ferguson Tristan Wirfs from left to right on that line. And they are a very very talented offensive line Nate Stanley says he's thankful to have them in front of him. Keegan Render the centers played every game since 2015. High formation as Render will snap it to Stanley. Not a lot of running room there off the right side just two yard gain. You know another unique thing about Iowa Brandon I told you they've got a couple of really good tight ends. You know and a lot of teams don't even have a fullback anymore. They got a couple of good fullbacks too. Yeah, Brady Ross and then Austin Kelly will spell him. Dalton Ferguson down there he's got an equipment malfunction. There's a the Ferrets boys right by each other 63 year old pops 35 year old son. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you Kirk Ferris they're not a 
finer gentleman in college football than that guy. What a pleasure to yeah. talk to him this week again. Yeah, he is all class. Longest tenured FBS coach, Kirk Ferentz. Kelly Martin out in the backfield. So that Minnesota run defense, we said they had to be better this week, and they have been. Big hit that time by Thomas Barber. Well, it's just the outside zone. You can see the blocking, and they got the first line block, but you know, you better account for number 41. And he wasn't real happy the way that he played against Maryland last week because he's a heck of a football player. Fourth generation gopher, and now he'll get a breather on third and eight. But Kelly Martin, six rushes, just seven yards so far. And this time it's Makai Sargent in the backfield with Stanley. Pressure up the middle. Stanley. Oh, he's got him wide open. Smith Marsh set down the sideline and into the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa. Stanley avoids the pressure and hooks up with Smith Marset for a 60 yard score. You talk about avoiding the pressure, but a late pickup. Look at that. I mean, he just gets a hand up. Sergeant just gets an arm on that blitzer, gives it enough time, and you got to credit Nate Stanley. He goes to scramble. I thought he was in a run, but he kept his eyes downfield. I had just mentioned that Sergeant came in for Kelly Martin for that third down play, and you said it just chipped enough to keep Stanley upright. Stanley. Last two passes have gone for touchdowns. The one to T.J. Hawkinson, and then the 60-yarder to Amir smith marset Yeah, and if you're Rob Smith, you're thinking about what are we saw. Terrell Smith missed the pick, which would have been a pick six, and then the blitz there. If he doesn't get a hand on him, it's a tackle for a loss. P.A.T. Good. To do is they got a mounted drive. You're talking about had a couple series and minus five yards. They they got to get convert some first downs and at least gain some field position. Is their total yards so far through two drives minus five. Elise, what are you observing on that Minnesota sideline down there? Well, Brandon, the defense came off the field after that second Iowa score, and they went over to their offense right away, and they said, keep fighting. You can do this. And if you're wondering how Zach Anikstead has handled it, well, each time he comes over to the bench, he shakes the hands of his receivers and O-line, and Flex says he loves to see that kind of stuff out of his quarterback because it shows he's not just thinking about himself during these tough times. He told us multiple times yesterday that he is going to need to fail before he succeeds. One for three so far. He looked good through the first three weeks, had the struggles and the two interceptions in that loss at Maryland. His ankle still a little hobbled, but he says much better than it was two weeks ago. As Ibrahim is hit after just a gain of one. And it's tough to run against that Iowa defense. You talked about it. They are near the tops in the league in every category. Yeah, you know, and for Big Ten people that have watch the game for a long time if you look at Iowa what you see is what you get they have played this same defense ever since Kirk showed up they, they didn't play it very well in his first couple of years but ever since then they're awful tough and those ranks were FBS ranks not just Big Ten ranks as Anikstead lost a high ball that is incomplete in the direction of Tyler Johnson now they wanted interference on Amani Hooker but there will be no call. Well you can see he breaks contain and then he just throws the ball up and I think it's a good no call. I mean he's got position. It's it's a very poorly thrown pass. It's into the inside and yeah, I don't see anything Amani Hooker did yeah. wrong. So Minnesota possibly staring at a third straight three and out. And we've got a flag down. Illegal substitution. Defense, 12 players in formation. Five yard penalty, still third down. And five yards, that would be Minnesota's longest gain of the game right there. It came yeah, on a penalty. You know, that, that that's a, a rule that's being called in modern football. It never used to be called. It used to be, you know, 12, 12 men on the field, but you can't have guys out there and 
quarterback standing back trying to think out. Wait, I don't understand this defense. So now they need four yards on third down. And extend. It is caught by Tyler Johnson. He has struggled with drops all year. That time it popped in the air, but he's able to reel it in for 13 yards. Yeah, that's the type of pass that he's got to catch. And you can see the mistake is he's trying to catch it against his body rather than his hands. He's too good receiver. Very fortunate that he held on to that. Everybody knows it, including Tyler Johnson. That's the one thing he has to improve. Hang on to that football. He only had 12 yards against Maryland, but that's because he was double teamed a lot, Tyler Johnson, as they go to Ibrahim. And an eight yard gain, so their longest two plays of the day come back to back. Tonight on BTN, Jonathan Taylor leading the 16th ranked Badgers as they host Nebraska. It's under the lights in Madison, getting underway 7.30 p.m. Eastern right here on BTN. And also you can watch anywhere on the Fox Sports app. First time that the Minnesota offense has been across midfield in Iowa territory. And it's the first carry of the game for the freshman Bryce Williams. You know when you look at this Minnesota offense I, I think it's only fair to say you know these running backs are pretty good but they're not in the same level of Shannon Brooks who's gone for the year Rodney Smith who I really like had another season ending injury so they're for all purposes down to their third and fourth team back and they're still pretty good though young guys Yeah, Rodney Smith week two torn ACL Shannon Brooks recovering from a torn ACL. He is in pads today, but he's not going to play. And back to Bryce Williams, they go for a pickup of four. But that really changed everything. Smith, all he can do is watch. Well, you, you know, you no know coaches want to talk about injuries, but if you looked at the roster of the Minnesota Golden Golfers and you listed, you know, the top players on their team, if you took Shannon Brooks, Rodney Smith, and Antoine Winfield Jr. Those are the three top guys and they're all on the sideline. We just saw Winfield. And that's really changed things for their defense at safety. Without him on the field. And extend. And that is caught by Chris Arpin Bell. He's able to pull it in. It'll be first and goal Minnesota. A nice 34 yard pass from Anikstead. Oh, that's a good, that's a 50 50 ball there, and he brings it on down. Awful good. And you know, the go for offense went from anemic to now they're running the ball, they're passing the ball, and that type of play, I think, is what's needed. Explosive plays, taking shots downfield against this Iowa defense. And that's one of those true freshman corners, Riley Moss. The other one, Julius Brent's a true freshman. Both of them starting today in place of Matt Hankins and Michael O.J. Moody. Wildcat, Seth Green. So it wasn't Anikstead this time. It's Seth Green as he carries it inside the five. Yeah, Seth Green, who was a quarterback, they moved him to tight end. Then he became part of the Wildcat package. And ever since Rodney Smith has been hurt, big, strong running back, they've been trying to use more Wildcat with Seth Green to add that dimension to it. Yeah, and it alleviates some of the pressure off of those running backs, Ibrahim and Williams. And it will be Green staying out there. He has four of their five rushing touchdowns on the season. So this is his territory. And he's going to keep. And a swarm of white shirts brings him down after a gain of one. Well, it's a big third down. And, you know, the Golden Gophers have left a lot to be desired in the red zone this year. They're only scoring 76% of the time, only 58% of the time touchdowns. So this third down in this situation is huge. They've got an excellent field goal kicker in Evan Car Evan Carpenter. But they don't want to settle for a field goal. Green off, Anikstead back in, third and goal. Anikstead, short drop. Puts it in the air, and it is caught for the touchdown by the freshman Rashad Bateman.
excellent execution by the quarterback. Back shoulder throw, good concentration, comes down with the football, and you can see the game plan. They're going to go after those replacement defensive back, cornerbacks that you're talking about. Yep, they targeted Riley Moss again. And that penalty on this drive that made it third and four instead of third and nine. Rashad Bateman, the Derby touchdown hat after he gets Minnesota on the board right back in this thing. And you talked about they're targeting those freshman corners. Let's see the last play. Yeah, here's a big third down to protect. You, pay, you need to protect, so they're doing the max protection. They're going to keep him in, keep the back in, gap everybody away. It's a one-man route. Give him time to throw the football. Puts it up, goes up and gets it. Touchdown, big play for the Gophers. Kirk Ferentz, you asked him, what's your biggest concern? He said those wide outs in Minnesota, they could hurt you. Yeah, I'm really impressed with him. And, and look at Amir smith mark set out to the 35. What he didn't tell us, he was worried about the wide receivers, but he didn't tell us that he was going to start two freshman corners. So that's why he was really worried. smith mark set. Trying to silence the Minnesota crowd with a nice little return. Yeah, you had a you had one of those golfers, Julius Brentsman, right on by him. That's the Iowa guy. Right? Yeah. Inside of a minute left in the opening quarter. That was Julian Huff that went by him, who normally is a real sure tackle. Six of seven so far for Stanley. They'll give it on to Kelly Martin. For Ivory Kelly Martin. His seventh carry of the game, and he only has nine yards. Well, you see big number 99 right there in the middle. O.J. Smith that came to Minnesota by way of Alabama, transferred from there, and he's a mere 6'2", 320. <laughs> well, they needed him after losing Stephen Richards oh. in the stove. Yeah. Steven Richardson played a long time around here, made a lot of plays. The young guy from Chicago. But O.J. Smith picking up the slack on that interior of the D line. Boy, they're continuing to stop the run. So they're making that Maryland run offense look like a distant memory. No gain that time. Great tackle by Sam Renner. Iowa will be facing a third and eight. They've had struggles running the ball. Maybe they need to go back to throwing the football. Well, you're right. And I'll tell you one thing. Watch Nate Stanley here. We talked about the two tight ends. Fanton Hawkinson, this is a while ago against Wisconsin, but here it goes. He's both tight ends going down there, and Nate Stanley's got them both wide open. So which one do you throw to? You throw to the one that's wide open. <laughs> Touchdown. And Dangerous to cover, awful tough. And Fan, that was his fourth touchdown catch of the season. We saw Hawkinson with a touchdown grab earlier in this game, but now third and eight. And the momentum for the moment has shifted to Minnesota. Do you play coverage or do you blitz? Time to find out. Here comes the pressure. Incomplete. Even if he caught it, he wouldn't have gotten there as he flinged it out to Ivory Kelly Martin. And Iowa will punt. Well, this is good defense. Anytime you can get pressure on the quarterback, only rushing four guys. And, you know, we talked about the problems that the offensive tackles from Minnesota had. Well, Tristan Worth, the right tackle, the sophomore right tackle, he got beat bad there. Yeah, Carter Coughlin got in in a hurry, and that disrupted everything for Nate Stanley. Demetrius Douglas back deep to return it. And a low wobbly punt from Rastetter, but it does take a nice Hawkeye bounce to the 17 yard line for a 45 yard punt. As we check back in with Elise Miniker. Brandon defensive coordinator Phil Parker was livid after that Minnesota score. He was yelling at his defense. If you're out there, you're going to need to work. And then in a completely different tone, Coach Ferens came over and said, just come right back and go. Come right back and go. As you can imagine, that calm demeanor of his. The final message from Parker to his defense, we need to go out there and finish just like we started. So different tones and messages, Brandon, but I think equally effective. 
see that note at the bottom starting two true freshmen in the secondary for the first time since the year 2000 when they started two guys by the name of Bob Sanders and Benny Sapp. So continue to keep an eye on those cornerbacks for Iowa. Over the middle and it's caught. Chris Hoffman Bell with another catch. Boy, you give this guy time to throw and you know for a true freshman he makes the read and we've said many times we're going to probably say it many more times today they've got good wide receivers a lot of them. Yeah, they've got Ottman Bell Tyler Johnson Rashad Bateman Howard Douglas. But this time they'll go to the ground and a big hole there for Ibrahim. Finally dragged out by Geno Stone. But a first down gain of 11. I am really impressed not just how they've picked it up offensively but how they've been able to run the football against this Iowa defense and you know they've got good backs and they're the third and fourth back on the team. Tyler Johnson with a the block there. Setting things up for Ibrahim. Stone misses that tackle it's gone. Iowa got up 14 nothing and it just felt like there was no energy in TCF Bank Stadium but that has really shifted and just as I say that a sack of Anikstead. Anthony Nelson and Monty Hooker were coming in and that's the second time that Anthony Nelson has gotten to Zach Anikstead. Yeah well, you know we talked about the problems that you have but I'll tell you one thing Anthony Nelson used that little swim move left hand right hand over and he was gone. And his dad Jeff played defensive line in the early 90s. He's proud of that move. Oh, proud indeed. He's saying that's just how like I used to do it. <laughs> so he came into the game with two sacks on the season. Now he has two here today. And that was for a loss of 11. Off of play action. And guess what? Who's there? 98, Anthony Nelson. Yeah, you can't you can't fault the offensive line and the Gophers there. He had all time to throw it, and you just got to watch that guy right there because uh, his motor's running right now. And uh, you're not hey, you're not going to block that big guy with a back. You're not going to do it. Uh. -uh. But you said it. There was time for Anderson. Oh, yeah. That was just a coverage set. No, that, that, that's right. He's, he's got to go back. He's got to make his read, his release, or run or throw it away. Because you're going backwards. Third and 24. Testing that young secondary of Iowa. And they're playing deep, and they should. And it's dead moving. And taken down from behind as he flings it forward incomplete. Chauncey Golston with a pressure. Iowa ratcheted up the intensity that time on Anikstead and his ankle has been bothering him and he seems to be limping. Yeah he's limping now and that mobility problem was against Maryland was very evident. Thought he was pretty healed but you'll see right here they get him around the ankle. Ooh, he might have been down. Johnson let's watch it right. Oh he's he's hobbled you can see it now let's watch the knee. Uh, I think he I think he was throwing it. Either way it would have been a punt. And the punt from Herbers to Gronowig, a 44 yard boot. You see her with a pin on as well. And the number that was on your screen. That's where you can go to support this cause as Nate Stanley puts the ball in the air to start this drive and it's incomplete as pressure was coming from both sides. Yeah I wasn't surprised at all that they no came right out to came with some type of pass play action pass deep ball shot they've really been struggling to run the football nowhere to go there credit to go for defense and credit Nate Stanley throwing the ball away because he had no place to go. Stanley so far six of nine 108 yards the two touchdown passes. Max Cooper went in motion as they give it with a fullback blocking. It was Ross leading the way for Makai Sargent. They eased him into practice. So that'll be something to continue to track. Third and one here. Unbalanced formation, motion back. And they'll give it to the fullback. And Brady Ross picks up the first. 
And that's where they use Ross, his sixth rush of the season. Yeah, well, they're just going to come off the ball if you get a hat on a hat. And you, you know, you got a fullback that's six foot, 245 pounds. It doesn't carry the ball very often. That's his job. You block, and on third or fourth and short, we give you the ball, get the first down. The first three drives for Iowa, they just had nine rushing yards. In the last two plays, they've had 14. Stanley rolling out and throwing for the first down into the hands of Brandon Smith. First catch for the Mississippi native. Yeah, that's a real simple play to run. They use turn back protection. Everybody on the line will turn back left. You break contain. You got a two man route, two on one. Got the short guy comes up, you lay it over his head. They both drop back and give it to the guy in the flat. Guy in the flat, Brandon Smith. He had the same stats the last two games. Two catches for 24 yards against both Northern Iowa and Wisconsin. He had 14 yards there. Sargent, he's got a first down and a hard hit. He's bowling over Kamal Martin for the first down. Well, you can't let Iowa do that. They run the outside zone. They pull a bunch of guys. There's no edge on the defense. And around the corner they go. And you see Wirfs there. I mean, that guy's 6'5", 320 pounds. And he's looking for a linebacker or a defensive back. That's problems. And it was Jacob Huff, not Martin, that he collided with there on the side. And Jacob Huff even more important today because you mentioned the Antoine Winfield injury out for the rest of the year. Now Huff is the leader at safety. This time not as much for Makai Sargent. And now Cashman on the sideline as well. Stanley to fan. So there is by all, most accounts the best tight end in college football. And he got wide open on a little dump off. Yeah he's what I call one of those hybrids you know he's a he's a tight end because of his size but athletic ability. I guess you'd call him a slow wide receiver, but you put the two together. Man, he's tough to defend. Eight first downs by seven different players for Iowa as Nate Stanley continues to get a lot of different receivers involved. Well, you mentioned Fant's 16 touchdown catches, most ever by an Iowa tight end. As this time it's Nick Easley, his second reception of the game, and he takes Iowa into the red zone. You know, Nick Easley's a wide receiver, has been around. Iowa City for a long time, the 5'11, 205 pound senior. And I think most Hawkeyes have been worrying, you know, hey, you need to show up a little bit more because you're a good player. So he has 14 catches this year, but 10 of them came in one game against Northern Iowa. And the good news is Blake Cashman is back on the field for Minnesota. Empty set. Boy, that's a big sigh of relief. For Rob Smith and that defense for the Gophers. Stanley incomplete. A rare drop for Amir Smith Marset on second and five makes it third and five. Yeah, they went to the empty set, so you A, you have confidence in your offensive line, picking everything up because you're gonna get no help. You see it right there, and you gotta throw it on time. It's wide open and hit him right there, and again. Tried to catch it against his body. So Kirk Ferentz looks on. Third and five from the 18. And Stanley able to complete it. Down to Brandon Smith. First and goal, Hawkeyes. Nice ball. Good protection. Good route. Soft corner. They read man coverage there, so he knows the corner has to protect him deep. Pushes him off, puts the brakes on, turns around, the ball's there. Result, first down. And it was Smith catching it in the soft defense of Smith, the cornerback. And we discussed earlier, a true freshman. Iowa on this drive. Four plays of 10 or more yards. Sets him up. First and goal, and the handoff to Sargent takes it inside the five. Yeah, they went 22 personnel, as I talked about before. So here comes Brady Ross, the fullback, number 36, and not going to carry the ball. You got to block. He went in and blocked the linebacker. And 
Ross is a great flashlight, if you will, leading the way in that Iowa running game. Pride of Humboldt, Iowa. And a junior that they are happy to have back there. He's leading the way in the I form again. But Makai Sargent was stopped in his tracks. Royal Silver with a tackle, but there was also some friendly fire here that brought him down. Yeah, but I, I tell you what, the Kamal Martin does a nice job on the edge there, using his hands. And there's nowhere to run. You, I tell you, this this uh, Gopher defense is really salty against the run. They've only given up one run where they lost contain, but they're playing tough versus the run. So third and goal. Iowa two for two on third downs on this drive. And whistles before the snap. Prior to the snap, charge timeout, Minnesota. They're first. The third and goal. Yeah, you're down the four yard line. You don't have any deep routes to worry about. You got to get up on those guys. Nate Stanley, two touchdown passes so far today, trying to make it three. Trips to his right, but he throws to his left. For Hawkinson, and it's too high and too far, and good coverage by Antonio Chanel. Yeah, it's too high, too far, too late. That's why the ball went out of the end zone. Good coverage, you really had nowhere to go with it. And Chanel was draped all over him. And Chenault, Chenault, he's playing both corner and safety today, seeing some time at safety with the injury to Antoine Winfield. And look at this, fourth and goal. And they still have Stanley out there. Or no, that's Rastetter, the punter. But they snap it to the right, and it's Hawkinson! And T.J. Hawkinson is in for the Hawkeyes! Pulls a rabbit out of his hat. How about that direct snap? Wow, I'll tell you one thing. I, I really thought they shifted over there trying to get Minnesota to go timeout to get lined up just to use a timeout. But man, you got to credit the center. That's pretty good left handed throwing it on over there and good blocking. And who said that? Kirk Ferns isn't a tricky guy. That's a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Racinos adds the PAT. Iowa had it fourth and goal, and what an interesting play we just saw. Oh, I love it. What's Subert right here? Snap the ball with his left hand. They have misdirection, and the rest is history. Here we go. They don't know where the ball's going. And great blocks, and that gets T.J. Hawkinson in for his first rushing touchdown on his first rushing attempt of his career. These tight ends do it all, don't they? Boy, they do. And, you know, there's been so much talk about Noah Fan, but Kirk Ferentz said, look, T.J. Hawkinson, lightly recruited, small-town Iowa. He may not get all the headlines, but he's really good. Yeah. Really, what I remember him saying was, you know, up until this year, he was a milk carton guy. I said, what does that mean? He says, Missing in action, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, he has been big today. And now let's test your knowledge with today's Aflac game trivia. Aflac! Big Ten, the only conference with three consecutive Heisman Trophy winners. Can you name them? I got the question right last time, so it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> We'll give you the answer shortly. Annex dead, going deep. Got a man out there. Flag comes in. And Rashad Bateman did not catch it. But again, laundry on the field. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we called it in the open. Uh, we were talking about it. This is Minnesota's chance. Defense number 33, 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. They've got really good wide receiver. It's the class of their offense. I had looked for them to keep taking these shots even before we knew that I was going to be playing two freshman corners, but they're tough to defend. And once again, targeting Riley Moss, the corner, still almost brought it in. Yeah, he's Heck all of an effort. Yeah. 
But the normal two starting corners, Matt Hankins and Michael O.J. Moody, are both here, and we are told they could be available. But they've been going with the other two, Julius Brents and Riley Moss, and a first down throw there to Chris Ockman Bell for 11 yards. Yeah, they get it going, and you know, you don't need great protection when you throw those type of routes. Now, the deep routes you, you do, but those little timing routes, what I call three step routes, and you have slants or fades or stops, you don't need a lot of protection, and they've got the receivers to threaten you deep, to respect you deep. They've got a quarterback and put the ball in the money. And Annex dead still looking pretty good throwing the ball. He'll be hobbled running it with that left ankle injury. That ball batted in the air. It's caught. Off the deflection. Bateman still able to haul it in. Maybe not how they drew it up, but they get 17 yeah, yards. That's right. You'll see it right here. And they get a hand up. The ball is tipped and good concentration. And Really, as I was lucky, normally when something like that happens, it goes the distance. Parker Hesse got the left hand on it, and then Jake Gervas, the safety, almost came in and clobbered Bateman, but he missed him completely. Anikstead has hit six of his last seven passes. And we'll give it back to Ibrahim. The diminutive back, maybe a yard. The fifth possession of the first half for Minnesota, and we see three punts and a touchdown so far. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of been feast or famine. You know, let's face it. And a big part of their problem again was when they had the inability to protect the quarterback, and Iowa consecutively came up with sacks. Protection, protection, protection. That was the struggles against Maryland for Minnesota. And that is incomplete. Tried to fit it into a tight window. But Amani Hooker was able to jar it free before Demetrius oh, Douglas man, could grab I, it. The tight window's right, and you got that right. The corner squeezed him, and Amani Hooker coming down from the strong safety position is breaking on the ball. Would have been a tough grab for Douglas, third and ten. Iowa defense moving around quite a bit. Here comes the blitz. Yeah, they bring five. Go downfield. Off the deflection, it did hit the ground before Julius Brents was able to catch it. He's shaken up his Brents. Officials timeout for an injured defensive player. Well, the, the pressure was on there, and I would call that just a he just heaved it. That was a wish and a hope. He had no idea what was going to happen here. Ottman Bell, the intended target. And Brents, slow to get up. He's one of those true freshman corners that we were talking about. Just landed hard on that side. You said it though that was just a toss up and a prayer. Yeah. And Minnesota as Brents goes to the sideline they're they're going to try a long field goal here. You you talked about Emmett Carpenter 49 yarder. He hit ones of 50 and 53 against Fresno State earlier this year and this will be a 49 yard attempt. Not much win. If any. They know he's got the leg. Oh how about that. <laughs> A little wind in the Twin Cities to aid the redshirt senior Emmett Carpenter. Emmett Carpenter played that draw that you play at Spring Hill Country Club. Yeah, well, you know, it's the if you got a draw, you play it. You know, he hit it good and just curved in and halfway there. Everybody thought he missed it. And he's, you know, he's just a heck of a kicker. Though. Boy, they rave about the type of person that yeah. he is too. They went on and on gushing about Emmett Carpenter. This time he kicks it away. And three yards deep. Smith Marset will go down to a knee. I want to see that draw one more time with the English she put on it. Wow. I mean, he turned it into it from a fade 
into a hook. Yeah. Yeah. The Phil Necro knuckleball curved outside back in. 21 to 10 with four minutes left. Iowa's had inability to run the football. And they only have 40 rushing yards. Kelly Martin, and again, nothing there. Thomas Barber and others in on the stop. I mean, they're getting it back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. I mean, there's nowhere to run. Maryland gashed them for the 315 yards on the ground that we discussed earlier, and they made it a point of emphasis this week. We cannot let Iowa get that ground game going. Well, a little misleading against Maryland because there was a lot of big play because of a missed tackle that should have been a one or two yard game. But they're playing exceptional run defense right now. Fan in motion. A laser of a pass incomplete in the direction of Noah fan, but it's broken up by Kamal Martin. Yeah, that's that's what's so dangerous. It doesn't work here, but you see the tight end Noah fan thrown way behind him. They've got the ability to run the seams. Two tight ends that can run the seams. If Stanley was able to put that on the money in front of fan could have been a big reception. And a big crowd here at TCF Bank Stadium. And they're starting to get into it on third down. Yeah, yeah they are. 100th homecoming, the Floyd of Rosedale. Big game. Here comes the pressure. Tried to dump off the screen, incomplete. Connor Coughlin was disrupting Stanley, put him on his back, fourth and ten, Hawkeyes will punt. Well, Jarek, the left tackle, I mean, he absolutely didn't touch his man one bit. You'll see it right here, and here comes Coughlin, who's a speed rusher, and I don't I know if Nate Stanley felt that pressure at all, but he let it go. They're very fortunate that wasn't picked off. They were going with the screenplay, but he had no idea where he was throwing that. Nate Stanley that first quarter he was six of seven two touchdown passes in this second quarter he's four for ten. Demetrius Douglas coming up and taking it just inside the forty five. All right let's get that Aflac trivia question answer now on the three consecutive Heisman Trophy winners. It's got to be Ohio State. Niles Kinnick Tom Harmon oh. Bruce Smith. Wow. 39, 40, and 41. How you doing? Look, we even got the pictures. Yeah. Now, see, my excuse is, Coach, I, I wasn't around then. So. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no. Shot, shot across the no, bow there. No, not, not at all. You weren't around either. <laughs> that wasn't your implication. <laughs> <laughs> and now Minnesota takes over. Ooh, they almost had the connection there to Ottman Bell over the top. Tell you what, if Minnesota could find a way to put points on here, this is a nice end to the second quarter for them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the way this game is starting to develop, we've talked about it. I'm not surprised that Minnesota's throwing the football. And now that going in the second half, if Iowa can't run the football anymore, we might have an air show the second half. Zach Anikstead, the true freshman from Norsland, Minnesota. Blitz. Yep, blitz coming. He dumps it off and then a quick hit coming up to make the stock. Geno Stone, a gain of five. Yeah, they were going with a little slip pass out in the flat. Stone, he smelled that right out. Made a good play. Monty Hooker was rushing hard at Anikstead. Officials timeout for an injured defensive player. And yeah, the officials timeout for an injured defensive player. Yeah. And Jack Hockaday, it's the Mike linebacker who Coach Ferentz has been, said been such a pleasant surprise. He comes off. Yeah, they can't afford another injured linebacker either. Well, remember they're missing Nick Neiman for a couple of weeks with an injury. 
He went out on the final offensive play against Wisconsin. Batted down. Amani Hooker back home in Minneapolis making a nice play. Well, you know, you, you mentioned it right before the half. You get down about that two minute mark, and Minnesota has the ball. They have momentum. So you look at it, there was a really good stop here by the Hawkeye defense. And Amani Hooker, the only Power five offer he had was from Iowa. Minnesota did not offer him. He has 20 friends and family here today. Felt like he's playing with an extra chip on his shoulder. And this is going to be a fake. And it's incomplete. He overshot Chris Ottman Bell, but the punter, Jacob Erber, showing a big arm. It did not work, however. Well, you know, that play, I've seen it a lot in the past in the state. Geez, why would you that risk that? One of the things that you're looking for is either for the guy to catch it or for the Iowa player thinking it's a punt and he get interference because he's supposed to hold that man up. And normally that's really what you're looking for that you get pass interference. That was a risky move right here before they have 202 left. You're down 21 to 10, and now you've given Iowa great field position. Yeah, so Iowa all three timeouts. Ottman Bell catches his breath after the incompletion. Incomplete. A little high and outside to Smith Marsek. Yeah, that was a that was a bullet going out there also. Stanley's been off on a few yeah, throws. As sharp as he started this game. And Things have changed. I mean, they were that first drive they had was a precision. It was just four for 11 this quarter. After that great opening 15 minutes. Swing it out. Nick Easley flag comes in at the end of this. He's pushed out by Blake Cashman. Holding. Holding. Offense number 12. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Yeah, that's his fellow receiver Brandon Smith. Of course, this then. Of course, Josie Jewell was the headliner a season ago. That was a spot foul, so it's second and 15. Nick easily the target again as he takes it over to the sideline around the 46. Uh, at least what did you observe there with Hockaday? Yeah, before he came off the field, he had to be helped by trainers actually off the field before going into the locker room. He laid down on the ground and athletic trainers were working on his left knee, it appeared, and then you saw him go to the locker room, need to be assisted by trainers or limping if not assisted. And Julius Brents, the cornerback, also went into the locker room earlier. You know, Brandon, this gopher defense, they're putting their ears back. They are really rushing the passer. Typically screen or draw works against that. Here comes the pressure, and they dump it off left side, wide open. Kelly Martin, first down, and then some. There you go. There you, go. you know what you're doing. That's a simple game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that worked man. to perfection. When he caught it, he yeah. turned around, nobody was there. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're a defensive player and you're rushing and you're coming so close, I mean, you want that sack and, you know, and, man, you think you got him and you say, uh-oh, it's too easy. There it goes. And Ivory Kelly Martin, who will turn 20 tomorrow with his first catch of the game. But he struggled to get it going on the ground, as is the entire Iowa contingent in the backfield. Over the middle, caught. Touchdown, Nick Easley. Stanley with his third touchdown pass of the half and his parents in the crowd. Jay and Donita, they love it as well. That's my boy. There he is. That's what you're saying. That was too easy. Good protection. 
Easley runs a nice little seam route. Good timing. Nate Stanley throws it right in there. And the point of emphasis to get more passes to the wide receivers and not just the tight ends. That has worked out well today for the Hawkeyes. So three touchdown passes. Both of his parents, by the way, went to Iowa, and they're loving this. Oh, look at that offensive line. It's a thing of beauty. Looked like Thomas Barber came off him a little too early. You got to keep forcing that man to the outside. And by the way, getting back to the Aflac trivia question, we do realize that we had a little typo on the screen and we wanted to fix that. So the three consecutive Heisman Trophy winners, Niall Kinnick, not Niles Kinnick, Tom Harmon and Bruce Smith. We wanted to make sure we cleaned that up. I don't know. Yeah, you're exactly right. Great player and. And everybody named knows Kinnick Stadium named after yes, him. Kinnick Stadium, Great absolutely. place to play college football and unless you're the opposing team. Well, <laughs> they, tough place to play. Well, speaking of which, they were so fired up for that game against Wisconsin. Felt like they were going to. That's a game that they've struggled in recently. And they felt they should have won that football yeah, game. Yeah, they, they really did. And I think all the Iowa Hawkeye fans thought so early. But hey, there's 135 left and the Hawkeyes still have three timeouts. So be interesting what coach Fleck what kind of approach he takes right here and that fake punt turns out to hurt Minnesota Come down. as easily able to get into the end zone on the strike from Nate Stanley 28 to 10 how would you play it if you're PJ Fleck well I, what I would do right here I mean yeah you're down 28 to 10 but what I try to do is I try to bust something on the first down you know what I mean uh, you know, a screen, a draw play, a run, or something. I bust it to the 40 or 50 yard line. Now I'm going two minutes. But at the very least, what I'll do is if I run the ball, I force Iowa to use one of their timeouts. You know, you, you can't turn it over good field position with them having three timeouts left. You can't do it. Watch the play clock here. And it's dead hit and drop. Chauncey Golston. Fourth sack in this first half for Iowa. He slipped right through there, the sophomore from Detroit. Well, you accomplished to get Iowa to use one of the timeouts, but not in the way that you wanted. You're so tempted if you're Minnesota because, again, the mismatch is on the outside. And there we go. They're throwing and completing. A lot of room to run. And all the way inside the 30. You can see why they want to throw it. There's a mismatch there. Tyler Johnson, he's the guy, and finally he wakes up. Yeah, watch it. Good route right there. He's right around the defender. Old Tyler, he gets his hands on the ball. That's when he becomes even more dangerous. 52 yards. I mentioned he only had 12 yards against Maryland, was double teamed most of that game. Maybe that's the catch he needs to break out. And this time for the end zone, and it is intercepted by the freshman Riley Moss. Well, they have picked on him time and time again, and this time he says, No, sir. Well, that's the biggest play Riley Ross has made in his young career. I can tell you that. Oh, good defense. Look at that. Goes and gets it up at the highest point. Brings the ball in. Great coverage in front of Chris Ottman Bell. And the first pick of his young career. So Julius Brents and Riley Moss. Both getting the start today at cornerback. Now Julius Brents was the top rated commit in the 2018 class, but Riley Moss was toward the bottom of the recruiting class. Well, you know what Kirk Ferns thinks of those recruiting rank rankings, he told us. And then a teaching moment on the sideline, Fleck and Anikstead. Iowa with two timeouts and a minute and some change in there. 
has an interception. Jacob Huff with a pick. Wow. Momentum shifts. And Annex Dead will come right back onto the field. Well, I can't even begin to explain this play by Nate Stanley. I have no idea where he's throwing it. I'm shocked. That's just not a Nate Stanley play. Not at all. And the Hawkeyes and the Gophers hugging it out after a pair of interceptions. Wow. What a big change this could be. First and goal from the six. Back in the end zone, no. A little too much for Rashad Bateman. I mean, you wouldn't expect that out of a true freshman quarterback that didn't play at all what Nate Stanley did there. Because one of the things about Nate Stanley we've been really impressed with is his decision making. I mean we noted that his passes have been a little inaccurate today but the decision making that's another thing. Minnesota can get the ball in the end zone here in the PAT all of a sudden you've got some momentum going into the locker room and they get it into the end zone right there. Tyler Johnson touchdown. And as you would say, we got us a ball game. I mean, he's under pressure. He puts the ball right on the money to his favorite receiver. I mean, he has pretty good time, but they get to him, and at the end, and you got to credit Zach Annex that he stands in there. He knows he's going to get hit. Puts the ball in the money. And right down Broadway from Emmett Carpenter, and we do have a ball game. The key interception by Huff. And then the touchdown pass and extend to Tyler Johnson. Yeah, and you got to credit the, the Gophers. They just keep hanging in there and, and playing. And like I talked about, it's pretty good protection, but these guys are pretty good. And right there, he knows he's going to get hit, crumbled up. He's got a bad angle. That's okay. Touchdown. He hung in there and now geez, the last five minutes and four seconds in this game we've had 24 points scored <laughs> and the crowd's right back in it. And we're just warming up baby. And we've gone from 14 to 7 to 28 17 in the last five minutes and four seconds. And Tyler Johnson. Touchdown catch number 14 in his career. Product of Minneapolis North local guy. Those local guys, they're not deterred by temperatures here in early October in the mid 40s. Well, this that's is for a, sure. Out of bounds. Out of bounds on the kickoff, and that's costly. Yeah. That's surprising. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. So the ball comes up to the 35 as we tell you about next Saturday. BTN tailgate heading to Penn State. Dave, Jerry, Howard, Spice, and Michelle, they're going to set the scene before the Spartans and the Nittany Lions do battle, all presented by TIAA. 10 a.m. Eastern next Saturday here on BTN. Brian Ferentz with some instructions to Nate Stanley saying, Nate, don't throw that pass you did last time. <laughs> you think that's what he's saying to Man, us? <laughs> I'm just so surprised. He, he told him that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> now it'll be interesting how do you play. 53 seconds, you got. Two timeouts left. You're up by 11. You go back to your tight ends. Empty set. Five wide for Stanley. And complete it is to the tight end, Noah Fant. By the way, stay tuned for the halftime report. Mike Hall, Stanley Jackson, Corey Wooten, they'll be along from Chicago, getting you caught up on the rest of the happenings in the conference. Wasting a lot of time here. Yeah, down to 33, 32. Here's the handoff. 
Okay, so they go with a pass. That time the run, he's going to be a yard short of the first down. 30 second charge, timeout, Iowa. Which is key, because they had to use a timeout, because they didn't stop the clock moving the chains. That's why they ran the football. All right, so now you're at your own 44, third and one, 25 seconds left in a timeout. What are you doing here? Well, I, I you know, I, if you have confidence in your running game, I mean, you have 25 seconds left, you run something quick, maybe quarterback sneak, you know, get the quarterback sneak, and then it stops the clock real quick, and you get lined up, and either you clock the ball so you can, so you can get everybody set and use one of your timeouts if you're a little nervous. You need to pick up about 20 more yards yeah. to get in the range of Racino. But you, you only need uh, less than a yard for the first down. That gives you not only a stop the clock, it gives you a whole couple more plays to do what you need to do. Iowa five of nine on third downs today. I'm really surprised they're not in 22 personnel with the run the fullback. They've been pretty good at that this year. Every Kelly Martin is in the backfield with Stanley. They'll swing it out to Easley. And Easley pushing forward. Well, that was close. I don't think he got it. Yeah, it looks like he's a little short. He tried to lower the head, and now they're just going to let the clock wind down to the end of the half. Well, the pass was behind him. Yeah. That certainly didn't help Nick Easley. Yeah, it has to be right in front of him to make the play. A little surprised at the play call. But... So some fireworks in the last five minutes of the second quarter. 24 points scored in the last six minutes. Already had Nick Neiman out. Barrington Wade got the start for Neiman. Now they're without Hockaday, so. Guys like Christian Welsh, Amani Jones, Jimon Colbert will be called upon in that linebacking core for Iowa. The good news for the Hawkeyes, they get the football here to start the third quarter. Yeah, they get the football and they've really struggled running the football, but you know the DNA of that program is when they struggle running, they don't give up on it. You know, they just keep doing it, keep doing it, they do what they do and so it's not I, I keep kind of joking and say hey maybe, maybe become an air show I really don't think that's going to be the case with Iowa they'll still mix it up but if they count too many people in the box don't be surprised if they don't start throwing well they have three guys they use in the backfield Kelly Martin Makai Sargent and now we're seeing Torin Young in the backfield for the first time but instead of giving it to him it's a pass out to Brandon Smith as he shoved out on the Iowa sideline. Now we talked about the bad pass. Here are some good passes from Stanley in the first yeah, half. Yeah, we've been picking up. He did a real good job, especially to start the game. And you know the thing about it, one of the reasons they started the game like they did was there was a lot of guys in the box for Minnesota stopping the run, and he was on his game. He scrambled and put the ball down the down the field. And I think that's why it's surprisingly that he made that bad pass that he did before the half. Stanley changing things, still I formation here. First carry of the game for Torin Young, and he's got the first down. Five-yard gain, first half possessions, a lot of first half possessions. A lot, a lot of, of a roller coaster ride. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you'd be pretty pleased, except for that one down there with it says interception on it. Well, they jumped out to that 14-0 advantage before Minnesota got on the board. Yeah, big difference. You don't make that mistake. You have an 18 point lead rather than an 11 point lead. Stanley on the move. Low intended target Nick Easley. I'm surprised he didn't throw that ball a little quicker. They they've had good success rolling out but it seems like he threw that ball late. And, a, and a, he could have caught it, but not a good pass. But still one that the senior easily usually comes up with. Yeah. 
Easily in motion. Makai Sargent. So a couple of better runs here on this possession than we saw in the first half. Yeah, that was well blocked. He stepped out of bounds. So now we'll come up with a key third down play. Yeah, so third and three now after that seven yard carry by the sophomore sergeant. They've had some success with the misdirection, especially with the tight end going with the naked, but they're not going to go naked out of an empty set. Stanley on an island by himself. And the blitz coming with the blitz. Looks up the middle, throw down the sideline. Did he catch that? There's a flag as well, but Brandon Smith caught it. Reaching over Smith, Smith hauls it in. Brandon Smith over Terrell Smith. Pass interference, defense number four. That penalty be declined. Result of the play is a first down. And the result of the play, 26 yeah. yards. Yeah, three things that happened on that play. One is a poor pass. Two is pass interference. And three, most importantly, a great catch. Did that ball roll on the ground? Looked like he had possession with both hands. But either way, it was pass interference. I think he had it secured. Yeah. As long as he has sec it secured, the ball can still touch the ground. Torin Young mentioned that he's getting some action here in the second half. Yeah, all three of those backs that they have. And you saw Torin Young there at 5'11", 221. And you can, you can see the sense of urgency. He ran with some power there. He's running for that three or four or five yards on first down and not trying to dance too much. Their goal is to get four or more yards on first down. That's when their offense works the best. All three of those backs are sophomores. And there's the junior Noah Fant. He's shy of the marker. Third down and three. Speaking of those three guys in the backfield, I mentioned they're all sophomores, but those are some good options. It is, and you know when I asked uh, Kirk about, you know, his running backs, and because he lost some good guys a year ago, he says, you know, I really like these guys. I like all three. They're, they're my type of backs. Those numbers were coming into the game. Let's see what they do here. Third and three. They'll throw it for the end zone. Incomplete. Smith Marset couldn't grab it. And here comes the field goal unit. Did you like the play call going for the end zone there? Well, he, he got press man coverage, you know, so. I think a lot of times if you get that look and you got guys on the inside, the cross is not going to work because they're playing man coverage. That's the best route to go to. So yes. 40 yard field goal this time. No fake. They kick it and it is up and good for Miguel Racinos. Chilly fall day in Minneapolis. Low hanging clouds over downtown. And at TCF Bank Stadium it's 31 to 17. In favor of Iowa. Homecoming weekend, Floyd of Rosedale, 112th meeting between the two schools. Didn't get any better than that. And a great crowd. Yeah, great crowd, great setting in TCF Bank Stadium. And Stadium built back from 06 to 09, opened in September of 09, and another kickoff going out of bounds here, so it'll come up to the 35-yard line. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. We showed you Iowa's first half possessions, and here are Minnesota's first half possessions. A little bit of a roller coaster for both teams. Yeah, you know, it, it really is. They, they got off to a slow start. They had trouble protecting the uh, passer there. They were going backwards for a while, but, you know, credit their poise. They hung in there, made some adjustments, and got it together. Zach Anikstead really hasn't showed much issue with the ankle since getting it taped up in the first half. That was a free for all. It's pulled down by Gervas, but he's out of bounds. 
That was another Hail Mary throw. We've you know? seen a lot of jump balls. Oh, man, he's just throwing it up there and hoping good things happen. And, you know, watch it right here. He's under duress, and he stops and throws it up, and everybody's out of bounds. But, you know, I, I, I guess if I'm an, an Iowa fan, I'm going to keep my eye on 33, Riley Moss, the cornerback, because he got to play better. He did have that interception, but as we talked about, they've been targeting him a lot. And instead, this time he throws in the direction of the other corner, Julius Brents, and it is caught by Bateman for an eight-yard gain. You can see it here. They're playing a cushion, rightfully so. They, you can't get up too tight on those wide receivers, and they throw it out there for a gain. You got to rally and get to a situation like this, and it's third and two, and it's a critical down. And Anikstead goes off or out to the left side as they go to the Wildcat look with Seth Green. And he runs it, but he has run one jump pass out of this, too. They threw a touchdown pass. Also is thrown for a two-point conversion this year. It's Ibrahim standing to his left, and he's going to keep it green. And he's got the first down. So he read it, took it around the outside, and picked it up. Eight-yard gain. Yeah, he looks a little banged up. And Limping and I'll tell you that's a that's a big man coming around the corner right there. That was a pretty good block by the little guy Muhammad Ibrahim as well. And Annex said he was just a decoy out there. Still got to cover him. That hurt ankle just taking a play off. Uh -oh. uh, we got movement. A lot of movement. Ball start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, that's Daniel Falele. He's normally the backup right tackle to Sam Schluter. And Daniel, let me just tell you something. If you move at 6'9", 400 pounds, they're going to see you. Yeah, you're not going to be missed. No. I think that's a safe assessment. No, they're going to get you. They've got another freshman along with Falele, Curtis Dunlap, 6'5", 370. He's the backup right guard. Ibrahim with a four yard gain. Man, look at he that guy. He is a big boy. Huh? Talk about playing for all the bacon in the Floyd or Roseville. <laughs> That's a lot of bacon right there. It's a tough assignment for Anthony Nelson trying to get around him. Oh, that new red shirt rule, P.J. Fleck has played eight true freshmen all four games. This is the cutoff point. If you play them more than four, they can't earn that red shirt. Jumping up to grab at that time, Rashad Bateman. He tackles for loss. He mentioned his dad, Jeff. Preseason second team Big Ten for Anthony. With three sacks total. Came into the game with two sacks on the season. Now he has five as Anikstead is going long. A one-handed catch, no incomplete. Ottman Bell couldn't hang on. Julius Brents on the coverage. Well, they had exactly what they wanted because the Hawkeyes came with the blitz. That puts one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside where Minnesota thinks they have an advantage. And, man, almost came away with a big play. Well, Ottman Bell, he did the hard part. He brought it to his chest with one hand. He just couldn't secure it. Now, Jacob Herbers, we saw the punter throw a long pass on the fake attempt in the first half that was incomplete. But here he boots it into the hands of Kyle Gronowick. Oh, they forget quickly. Torin Young will get the first look here on this drive. Well, here's what P.J. Flake was talking about when he said, hey, our defense has got to make some stops. We can't give up any more points. We're trailing the first drive of Iowa. They went down and kicked the field goal. That's a win, you know, for, for Iowa. So, you know, now you, somehow, some way, you got to come up with the stop, force the punt, get the ball in good field position for your offense. It still has been a game of passing. Between the two teams, 81 rushing yards combined. Pressure from the back side. Stanley lost it. It is picked up and taken inside the five by Thomas Barber. And if I had to bet, it was Carter Coughlin off the back side. It was indeed. Recovered by Minnesota. First down. Coughlin forced it. Barber picked it. 
backed it up. Minnesota's in business. You're not kidding. Even better than a stop. You can see it right here. Oh, that's classic. He got the ball and it's out. Almost went right in their hands. Thomas Barber picks it up. Now, if Thomas was as good a running back as his brother Marion, he would have scored on that play, but banner play. So you had that Stanley interception. Now the fumble, both of them coming very deep in their own territory. And they're going to the Wildcat look with Seth Green. Can Minnesota cash in? Green straight ahead. And he stopped just short. Jake Gervais met him at the apex, second down. Just kept him out. Yeah. But Base, nice tackle. Couple of more hacks at it here for Minnesota, and it's still green. He'll go again, and Seth Green scores it for the Gophers, and we've got a one score football game. Yeah, you've got 192 yards of total offense, and it's a football game. And you'll have 24 points on the board. Both of those Stanley turnovers leading to quick touchdowns for Minnesota. So Minnesota, six rushing touchdowns this year, five of them by Seth Green, the converted quarterback, turned tight end, turned wide receiver, turned wildcat quarterback. Seth Green in Minnesota makes it a one possession game, but it was Carter Coughlin forcing the fumble that set it all up. Yeah, irony. I kept talking about Minnesota's inability to protect the passer the other way around. Here comes Carter Coughlin, the junior from Eden Prairie. Fifth sack of the year, first sack on the day, and what a great play. Carter Coughlin, uh, his dad played here, his grandpa played here, his grandpa was the AD here, making everybody proud. And 31 24 as Iowa's lead has dwindled down to seven. Smith Marset with a return stays on his feet and finally gets upended by Jacob Huff, the last line of defense. But a return of 48 yards. Smith Marset's frustrated though. He wanted to take that to the house. Yeah, I'm surprised he took it out of the end zone, but let's watch it. He's going right up the sideline. He runs into his own man and a couple of key blocks. And man, I thought he was off to the races. And that's exactly what the Hawkeyes needed. A big momentum change. So now they're back on the aggressive end of things here. Kurt Ferentz. Watching his offense go on and operate with Nate Stanley under center. And the give to Kelly Martin. Martin with a hole. Lowering his shoulder. First down gain as he pushes over Antonio Chadal. Let's go back downstairs to Elise. After that fumble by Stanley, he didn't really have much to say on the sideline. He just said to his teammates after that Minnesota score, here we go, we now have to come right back. And all that right in line with how Kirk Ferentz describes his quarterback. He's very even keeled and leads by example. And his quarterback here running for his life, and he's hit as he throws out of bounds. No foul for intentional grounding. Quarterback was outside the pocket. The ball passed the line of scrimmage. Second down. Yeah, well, you come with the play action pass and there's nowhere to run. He throws it away smart. And no intentional downing, no rough in the quarterback. I'm not surprised they came with the play action pass. You get a run going. You think that Minnesota will put an extra guy in the box, play man coverage, and play action should be good. Well, that run before that pass of 15 yards was Iowa's longest run of the day. And now right back to what they had been doing in the run game. Very little Blake Cashman coming up and holding Kelly Martin to a gain of two. Yeah, good run defense. I mean, it's it's missing hit as far as running the football as far as the Hawkeyes are concerned. So that's the three man rushing attack. And this is what they've done today. It's been a different story than earlier in the season. 
Yeah, nothing spectacular there. You know, if you're in Minnesota, you've held them to 73 yards rushing midway through the third quarter. You're happy. Stanley on third and eight. He's got the first down. Right around the 20, Hawkinson, who has two touchdowns today, able to hold on for 16 yards. Man, he, he threw that with confidence. Look, watch it there. He drills it right in there. And we talked about those tight ends, and they have a way of getting open. Talk about two, I don't know if you want to call them safety valves, big playmakers, Hawkinson and Fant, Nate Stanley's best friends. Ivory Kelly Martin tapping around the ankles after a gain of nine. And we're inside of six minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, and if you're Kirk Ferentz or Bryant Ferentz, you're thinking, oh, you got to be kidding me. This is where the run game has got to take over. we got a big offensive line. It's our mentality. That's what we're built for. We get it on near that red zone. we got to run the ball in the end zone. Even against Wisconsin's defense, they ran for 148. They're up to 80 rushing yards now today. High formation. Kelly Martin bounces off a of one, but then gets dropped. He does, however, pick up the first now. Yeah, he did it by himself there because the fullback, Brady Ross, the lead blocker, that was a hit and miss on the linebacker. Oh, boy, they... Got some movement at the line of, at the point of attack, but then he did it all by himself. Jacob Huff made the tackle to keep it out of the end zone. Kelly Martin had just 12 yards in the first half. He's got 26 yards on the ground, though, here in the third quarter, and now he's replaced by Makai Sargent, who's dotting the eye in the eye formation, but it's play action. Stanley has all day incomplete. DeAndre Thomas covering Smith Marset. I don't know if they've lost confidence in the running game or I know it's been tough sledding, but you get the ball inside the red zone. First and ten. And Smith Marset wanted a flag, so did Stanley. DeAndre Thomas on the coverage I mentioned he. Missed the Maryland game violation of team rules, but practiced all last week and back out here today. Down to the five yard line goes Sargent before he's tackled by Royal Silver. So we'll have third down coming up. They don't score a touchdown. It'll be very disappointing for the Hawkeyes. First and goal inside the 10, and now you come down here, you got to think it's a pass down, and the quarterback in a roll and break contain. Watch out for the tight end. Yeah, Noah Fant is on the right side of that line. He's looking that way, and Noah Fant has it for the Iowa touchdown. The tight end show continues for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, I, I guess if there's one guy that I would cover, I'd find out where 87 is, and he runs a crossing route, and they've got a guy running man for man for him, but he just can't stay with them. And Blake Cashman, the linebacker, trying to run with him. You probably need a defensive back on him because he's more like a wide receiver. Mismatch. Extra point good. Noah Fant with a touchdown reception. Most ever by an Iowa tight end in a career with 17 of them. As they continue to battle for the 98 pound pig, the Floyd of Rosedale. I tell you one thing, I wouldn't want to try to pick that thing up by uh, myself. You couldn't. I mean, tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> you have trouble picking up a cup of coffee. <laughs> Uh, you know what I deserve that after my jab at you earlier so fair catch for Minnesota. 
So the Hawkeye defense popping back out here. What adjustments, yeah. if any, do they need to make? You know, if I was Phil Parker, they're really struggling covering those really good wideouts man for man. And so you got to rely on the pass rush. But if we talked about before, Minnesota's done a pretty good job going to some max protection by formation. I would think if I saw their chance to go max protection, I would check out of the blitz and not play that man coverage because they can't do it. It has hurt them at certain times here in this game. 38 24 as Minnesota now tries to strike back down two scores. And Ekstead has it to Tyler Johnson for a first down out across the 35. I'm going to tell you, the offensive line for Minnesota is doing a remarkably better job of protecting the passer than they did against Maryland. And Maryland does not have the talent up front that the Hawkeyes do because that's really a good defensive front. Boy is it ever. Phil Parker and Kirk Ferentz they just praise that defensive line as the strong point for the Hawkeyes. We already talked about the youth the inexperience coming into the season at linebacker. So this is max protection right here if they pass it. They go Wildcats Seth Green so we've really only seen that around the goal line but this time they do it from their own territory. And as I mentioned before, they're using this more because they don't have Rodney Smith in there who is really a big tough runner inside. So they went to a guy that's not really a running back, but he's got the size to be a running back. They're staying with Seth Green. What does this do defensively? What adjustments do you have to make? Uh, I think you're just going to play run. I mean, if you're going to play run the whole way, you don't think he might run a pop pass, but he's not going to. Got a flag coming in here, so hold that thought. I think they're going to call defense offsides. Offside, defense number 94. Jumped in the neutral zone, forcing the offense to react. Five yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, 94 jumps, he forces that left tackle to move Correction, a little bit. results in the first down. Kirk's not happy. And that's that great edge rusher, A.J. Epinesa, with a penalty. I think what Kirk is arguing that the left tackle didn't really move very much. He was in a two point stance. He just adjusted a little bit. I'll stay with that same formation. Green will throw and he will complete it. So Seth Green hooking up with Tyler Johnson. Yeah that was an awful good pass. As we talked before we saw some passes out of him a jump pass but I don't think we've seen a regular down play like that on a slant route. And now Tyler Johnson is at 100 yards. Seth Green in the spring converted from quarterback to tight end. They didn't really have a spot for him and now he has really found a home as the Wildcat guy. He's going to keep the fake to Ibrahim and then up the middle inside the 30. Let's toss it back to Chicago and our good friend Mike Hall. That is one of your favorite things when oh, Mike Hall says wide open. Exactly. I try, I, I try to. Oh, there's a handoff over him this time. I try to imitate him on those wide open calls, but I, I can't get it done. Zach Anikstead, he's been out there, but he's just a decoy. Rested. This whole series, Wildcat. Why not put somebody else out there instead of Annex down? Well, he's just rested. He's okay. But what, a big, bigger threat, you mean? Yeah, I guess that's my question. He's got a hobbled ankle. Why not put a receiver out there? Well, Seth Green tackled in the backfield, coming up to make the stop of Monty Jones. Well, to answer your question, the, the reason why is if you took the quarterback off the field and left it there, the defense really knows what you're doing. You're going Wildcat. With Seth Green still on the field, you may be you in Wildcat, switch it. you may not. You might have gone to the well once too often there. And credit Amani Jones slipping through for his first tackle for a loss of the season. Charge so timeout, Minnesota. They're first. So here you second timeout. 
Here's your situation. It's either fourth and four or 45 yard field goal. Yeah, you either you either gamble to keep the drive ahead or get the field goal, assuming you're going to get it, and then be down by 11. Carpenter on the field. Let's tell you about campus eats. Troy Johnson, Jenny Dell. They'll show you some of their favorite spots to eat around the Big Ten. All new campus eats Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on BTN. I tell you what I, I think I do. I have a lot of faith in Emmett Carpenter. I think I kick the field goal and keep momentum on my side. You know, I feel good about it. Now, obviously, if they convert this, then, then it's the right decision. But I don't want to give Iowa anything to really get excited about. And four yards, you know, that's no gimme. It's not like it's fourth and one. They need four here. And it's Annexted back at quarterback. Pressure comes, throw, incomplete. Trying to get it to Johnson, but Amani Hooker was right there. And so, Iowa gets the stop. Yeah, and here, look at Kirk's all fired up now. Great job. He's doing everything. And you know, momentum's a funny thing. I really thought that, you know, Minnesota had a good defense and they sat right down. I think they anticipated the slant route, figuring they wouldn't go deep. And, Went to their favorite receiver. And he was coaching him right through that play, wasn't he? I don't know if he was coaching or praying. I'm not really <laughs> sure right there. My fourth downs have been huge oh, today. Man, a lot of them, huh? Wow. Min Minnesota. And most of them got in the favor of the other way. That's exactly yeah. right. Iowa two for two. Minnesota 0 for two. We remember that touchdown by Hawkinson on the fake play. And they're going to hand this off to Smith Marset. So the first time he's gotten the carry today in the run game, the wide receiver. Yeah, and that jet play is a play that really hurt Minnesota defense the last time they played against Maryland. Well, Maryland, they really did gouge them on that. You're exactly right, all game long. And that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. BTN football presented by American Ethanol, 38-24 Iowa, hoping to keep possession of the Floyd of Rosedale, the pig that was being carried out there. It took two men, and as you said, 98 pounds, that's tough for one guy. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Well, Kirk Ferentz said that's the coolest trophy in all the college football, hard to argue. Torin Young, the lone set back play action. Pressure hit as he throws. Terrell Smith, the corner coming in and laying the lumber on Nate Stanley. Yeah, that go for defense doing a good job again. After Stanley, you'll see it right here. I mean, you got to account for these guys coming. Doesn't matter if he's a freshman or not, he's going to beat. You got to block him. Now, is that a protection problem? I would think it's more of a problem with Nate Stanley. You got to see that guy. You don't have to be on him. You got to check out of it. Instead, Smith got in there scot free. So now third and four. Stanley, nowhere to go. Hawkinson, the target incomplete. And now Iowa will punt with 14.48 remaining. Yeah, credit that defense. Playing well, put pressure on the quarterback, and then they had good coverage. Nate Stanley had no place to go. He went to Hawkinson late, 50-50 ball, and neither guy came down with it. DJ Fleck always pacing. And sends out Demetrius Douglas for the return. Demetrius's dad played here, Omar, great player. Douglas, a red shirt freshman, a lot of speed. Low punt by Rastetter. Here is Douglas. Not much chance to use that speed there as he's buried quickly around the 25. Seth Green trotting out, 38-24 the score. And the points, though, they've come recently. Here's the windy stat of the game. First 24 minutes, 21 points since 41. Yeah, I wouldn't say we started slow, but 
And all of a sudden, man, it became wild. Short fields, turnovers. If you like points, it's been a good game for you and still 14-39 remaining. So Seth Green, the guy, and he's going to throw it. He's going to throw it deep. And he's going to have it intercepted by Julius Brents. How about the true freshman quarterbacks for Iowa? Riley Moss had the pick earlier, and now Julius Brents, the freshman from Indianapolis, the interception there. Well, we talked about them keep trying to go deep, and man, is that a good interception. Tyler Johnson was trying to argue that he jarred it free at the end of this play. I can't see anything there. Oh, at the end, after he rolls over. Yeah, but it looked like he still kept possession of it. I think that's an interception. Yeah, I think it is too. I mean, there it's bobbled, but then it comes back to it. Yeah, Nefton hits the ground. Those true freshman <laughs> cornerbacks. Yeah, and I want to tell you something. They've They've had a they've been checked out boy I'll tell you that in this game. Look at that. Brent's the top rated commit in this 2018 class for Kirk Ferentz shows you why on that play. So Iowa gets it back. And we might see an even heavier dose of the ground game here Ivory Kelly Martin with a carry. Julius Brent's a happy man. Man. How would you like to come into a game like Iowa did and you know the most potential problem that you have is those wide receivers and you have to you both your corners are sitting on the bench and you got to play with two freshmen. Both, Man. both 18 years of age. But stepping up and making some veteran plays. Third down. Royal Silver coming up that one for a loss of two. Yeah the Hawkeyes just can't get anything consistent on the ground. They run a zone play they pick up five yards looks pretty good come back again. Nothing. So two runs now you're third and seven. What are you going with here. I'm going to throw the ball here. Well, I know. But I what know I'm gonna... thinking about it. Let me get a little time. <laughs> I don't know. I like the tight ends. I mean I've been going that I think if you I wouldn't be opposed again though if I read a lot of guys in the box press coverage on the outside. I'll throw it again. You're not really getting press coverage here. Nate Stanley 21 of 36. But you're getting blitz. Here is the blitz. Releases it incomplete. Well, he was trying to go to Nick Easley, but yeah. Antonio Chenault was with him stride for stride. Yeah, they got Max Blitz, both linebackers coming and they throw it deep and whew. Had a chance. I don't know that there's anything else Nate Stanley could have done. Chenault though with good coverage. Yeah, it was it was one of those that would have you'd say, well, who's at fault? He's either a great catch or good deep defense. Second straight three and out for Iowa. Ooh, almost got to that punt. Iowa bounce. Yeah, it took a big Iowa bounce all the way inside the 20. Scott Frost still looking for his first victory. And it's not going to get any easier tonight in enemy territory. So Iowa, no points off their two turnovers. Minnesota, they have taken advantage of the Iowa turnovers and cashed those in for two touchdowns. And instead, though, nowhere to go. And eventually, he's dropped back around the 10 yard line. Yeah, mistake there, rookie mistake. He saw everything unfolding in front of him. You got to throw the ball out of bounds. Just watch 52 right here. Watch the whole play, and all of a sudden he goes, "You know what? I'm going after him." Now you see him coming there, Zach. Let her fly out of bounds. You're out of the pocket. That's five sacks now for Iowa. We talked about the protection problems Minnesota had against Maryland, although that time, yeah, that's, that's that was different. Uh, exactly. You got to get rid of that ball. Right? But Maryland sacked Annex dead four times, and that was too far, and it's intercepted. It's Riley Moss again. His second pick of the game. Welcome. 
Welcome to college football, Riley Moss. What did I tell you the whole game? Don't worry about these freshman corners. Well, this is this is just a, a pass that's thrown up for grabs. Let's face it. You can see it's good coverage, and he overthrows the receiver. There's really double coverage on their man. They're trying to throw it to, and they convert from defense to offense. Soon as old Moss gets his hands on the ball, so I've been dreaming about this. Get me some blocks. Get me in the end zone. Now the emphasis goes back to that offensive line, offense of the Hawkeyes. First and ten inside the ten red zone. Come on, fellas, you got to be able to run the ball. So a couple of picks for Zach Anikstead. And now Iowa will finally look to cash in off the turnover. They give it to Fant in the running game on the sweep. And he's hit hard by Barber. Second half possession, field goal, fumble, touchdown, punt, a little bit of everything. Yeah, you can't be impressed with what they've done in the red zone. Had a red zone opportunity here, but they went backwards on that last play. He fumbled it. Stanley slings it over to Easley. There's a flag in. As Easley is dragged down. I wonder if there's a lineman downfield. Yeah, it was a mad scramble after Stanley lost the football. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, clipping, offense number 38. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 31. Those fouls offset, repeat second down. So the first foul was on Iowa, and then this horse collar on Thomas. Yeah, let's watch it right here. He's going for the tackle, and he gets him right there. You can see it. Yeah. Pulling him on down. Right side, right there. Oh. Got it a little bit late, but you can't do that. You can't go from behind and block below the waist. P.J. Flex looks on after the offsetting penalty, second and goal. I formation. They'll give it to Young. And he's tripped up by the ankles to the nine. I'll tell you, Minnesota was fortunate there because with the change of the formation, the Gophers were outflanked. You know, if they could have got the what they call pin and pull, it was Katie bar the door. Instead, Still nine yards to go on third down. Got to be impressed with the Gopher red zone defense. Not so much with the Hawkeye red zone offense. Well, even if they can't convert here, a field goal would make it a three score game. Inside handoff, Young, full head of steam. And the big uglies try to push him forward, but he's going to be short. So you're around the two yard line. You still kick the field goal, though, right? I, w I would, like you talked about, three scores. I mean, it kills you because you, I mean, you want to go for it so bad. You're so tired of seeing your offense stalled down here, but you got to be smart. You play it by the book. You go up three scores. You're in the fourth quarter. You're under 10 minutes. No brainer. Kick the field goal. Brian Ferentz said in an article this week, we make all of these fourth down decisions Friday afternoon, so there's no spur of the moment logic erased by emotion. Well, I can tell Brian there's only one guy that made that decision. It's Dad, Kurt Ferentz. <laughs> Period. You keep it, but you've never seen anything like a team that lines up and waits for those final seconds and rushes across the field to go get Floyd. It's one of the great sights. In college football. But if it's going to be Minnesota doing that, they're, they have some ground to make up here with 9.20 yeah, they, left. They got to get with it. There it is, just outside of the west end zone. Yeah. Someone's guarding. Security. I like his job. Who, oh, Floyd's or the security guy? Well, I, I don't know about <laughs> Floyd. I might be turned into some bacon later tonight, but the security guard, just get him some hot chocolate. We're good. Well, you can. They backed those corners off a little bit, rightfully so. 
Zach Anikstead through the first three games didn't throw any interceptions. Now he's thrown four in the last two weeks. This time low, but it is caught by Rashad Bateman. Man, Bateman, they really like him. You know, not only does the Gopher coaching staff like him, talking to the Iowa coaching staff, that guy's caught the ride. Well, late in the process, he had a lot of ACC and SEC offers, but he stayed true to his word to be a Gopher. Up the middle, pretty good hole across the 40. Interceptions, three of them all tall, difference in the game. And five sacks for that defense as well. Shoestring tackle there by Imani Jones. As we welcome Elise back in. As you can guess, Brandon, there has been a lot of excitement on this Iowa sideline, and it's all because of Riley Moss. I heard fellow cornerback Mac Hankins say, hey, if you get another one, that's a hat trick. And then I heard Moss kind of say, like, what happened when he came off the field? I think he's really just embracing and enjoying this moment. Well, it's been a big moment for the true freshman. There's no doubt about it. There is a hat trick between the two, Brinson Moss. You know, that's a good term to use being you're in hockey country, right? Hat trick. <laughs> Ibrahim picks up the Minnesota first down. You know, Ibrahim, watching him on film, I'm really impressed with that guy. He runs hard, 5'10. Timeout for an injured defensive player. 5'10, 205 pounds from Maryland. And the other thing that caught my eye for a young guy, man, does he block well? He got to be awful strong. So just that. Please adjust the game clock to seven minutes, 57 seconds. They're going to add seven seconds to the game clock as Hooker Thank went you. off for the injury, but appears to be okay. But yeah, Ibrahim, they, they talked about that low center of gravity. Said he's just deceptively strong. And he's going to be on the field here in the backfield with Anikstead. In this game, 11 carries 47 yards for him. But Anikstead throwing this time and completing it. Right back to Rashad Bateman. Bateman also has Row the Boat tattooed on his arm. I don't think he's going to transfer anytime soon. No, nah, and you know, they're getting right to the line. They're not, it's got to be a sense of urgency as far as time here. They're, Getting right up the line, but not running plays quickly. But you can see why PJ Flex excited about the young players in his program. Quarterback, receivers. PJ Fleck was a really good receiver himself at Northern Illinois back in the day. He was there from 1999 to 2003 before moving on to be being a coach. Started as a graduate assistant at Ohio State and on up the ranks. Bryce Williams in the game now. We haven't seen as much of Williams. He only has two carries today. Make it three carries for Bryce Williams. First down. Stay tuned, Mike Stanley and Chuck. They're going to be along for the State Farm post game, getting you caught up on everything happening in the Big Ten. Be Corey Wooten in the studio. Chuck was on game duty today with Lisa Byington. Six and a half minutes left. And the pass complete. So Tyler Johnson, he's up over 100 yards today, seven that time. Yeah, we're getting a steady diet of those little slam routes thrown on time. But the clock continuing to roll. Start. Thinking if you're a defensive lineman, so I can't rush that. I'll just put my arms up. I'm tall. Let's see if he can throw the slant over my arms. Ibrahim. Eventually wrapped, twisted like a pretzel, and dropped to the ground by Jimon Colbert. I'm sure that Joe Parker's thinking this game's not over, boys. Let's go. Three possessions, but a touchdown here, and it gets a lot more interesting. And Extend keeps looking for Bateman. He got it. Somehow he fit that between three defenders, and Bateman has his second touchdown.
Anikstead found the crease. Yeah, a lot of fight in this team. Stands tall and you're right. They were closing in from the left. They were closing in from the right, but he got it right in the middle. Carpenter up and good. Don't. Okay, Mike Rashad Bateman, a couple of touchdown grabs. And Zach Anikstead was four for four on that last drive to pull Minnesota back within 10. Yeah, almost a steady die to those little slant routes, but good execution. And hey, you got to you know, credit the Gophers are hanging in there. They're playing. And a lot of young guys, no give up. And this this game is not over. I mean, I'm not sure that, that Iowa defense realizes it, but I tell you, if the Minnesota defense can get a stop here and get the ball back 535, Looks like they're going to onside it, coach. We've got both guys out there. Carpenter, will he kick it? Yes, it is an onside kick, but it goes right to Amani Hooker. Wow. Yeah. I was going to yeah. ask you if. Uh, I know you're going to ask me, and I would have said, no, I'm going to kick it deep, and I'm only going to say it because my defense is playing well, and the, the offense for, to five minutes, for Iowa has left a lot to be desired. I would have. I would have tried to hold them back up there Thank you. with the clock's running because they're probably going to try to run the ball. Now you've given them really good field position. To boot, it was a bad, bad onside kick. Minnesota with two of their three timeouts. Yeah, that's not how they drew it up. So in plus territory at the 45, easily in motion. Well, that was Gronowig in motion. Now you can try to eat that clock, four yard gain. Yeah, if you're Iowa, you don't need to score again. All you need to do is keep the ball and get some first downs. And they've not been too bad running the football on first down, but second down's been killing them. Kirk Francis, first uh, and Brian would tell you, you know, they're their plan is to run for four more yards on first down. When that happens, they really feel like they're in control. The problem is that when they've been second and six, they come up with nothing. They got four of the first down there from Kelly Martin. And they return it to Ivory County Martin, but nothing there. Same old, same old on second down. So third down at six. So Iowa will run this down as far as they can. I would have bet money we would have saw that set with the two tight ends. Hawkinson and Fant right lined up next to each other, tight end and wing, and then let them both go deep, but we haven't seen that. High formation. Spread out. And finding Smith Marset. First down and a big first down for Iowa. Yep. Like I mentioned, you don't need to score if you're Iowa. The clock is your friend. You're under four minutes. You just need to pick up first downs. And everybody tight in there at the line besides Smith Marset. Well, they've been pretty effective all day on that break contained role. And been there most of the day. Kirk Ferentz hoping for his 147th win in his 20th year at Iowa. Kelly Martin caught up in the backfield again. Nowhere to go. Yeah, he's right around two and a half yards per rush. 30-second charge, timeout Minnesota, their second. Kelly Martin back out there against Wisconsin, 14 carries for 72 yards, but today 19 for 42. Yeah, and, and Kirk does as good a job as anybody that, that I've seen. He'll play close to the best. You know, his idea, if we win the game, it's fine. So, normally doesn't lose his patience. Second and 14. Stretching it out to the right. Gets those yards back. And one or two more. And now Kelly Martin a little slow to get up, but he does. Officials time out for an injured offensive player. At a third and nine as the clock winds toward three minutes. And then you got another decision if you don't get the yards. 
long field goal and go for it on fourth. Yeah, from here it would be about a 48 yarder. Once again the rollout then Stanley Thompson goes the other way and wide open is TJ Hawkinson. And he is going to be pushed out just short. Almost his third touchdown of the game. Well, you, you call this a why high. Why being a turn for a tight end and you flow one way and the tight end hides and he slips back back door. But that right foot is clearly out before he gets toward the pylon. And on this play, the tight end will either be covered or as Mike Hall would say, he is wide open. And boy, was he ever. It was a 29-yard reception, and Stanley's up over 300 now, 314. Gives it to Makai Sargent. He's not going to get there. Oh, Minnesota claiming the ball came out, and they've got it. But the officials have not signaled that. The runner was down before the ball came loose. Second down. Well, that would have been what Minnesota needed. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah, there's a pile there. Yeah, his elbow was down. Yeah, good call. Elbow hit the ground. Kamal Martin came in there, stripped now, it free after the you fact. Got, you got to be impressed with this run defense of the Gophers. So much better than they were two weeks ago. Did he get in there? Yes. This time, however, Iowa pushes through with a rushing touchdown. Makai Sargent with his fourth of the season, first of the day. Yeah, he got in and number 99, O.J. Smith, the big defensive tackle, and he came on and put a lick on it. And Sargent may have just put one, this one in the left hand column for the Iowa Hawkeyes as they try to make it a four game winning streak in this series. Ain't over till it's over, but I'd say that's all she wrote, baby. Forty seven points. Trying to make it forty eight. And Miguel Racinos does just that. 127 left. Six touchdowns for Iowa in this game by five different players. The only man with two is Hawkinson. Yeah, a lot of points in this game. And is she, is she from Iowa, you think? I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, you know, Gophers 31 points against a team that was only giving up 13 points a game. I mean, that's good blocking in there. And, Good defense. That's football right there. Not meant, not meant for everybody. Well, you said it though. They did get in on the running game there, but nothing has come easy on the ground for Iowa today. Now they are over 100 yards rushing, but they're only at 2.8 per attempt. Yeah, they can't be. When you look at that offensive line, and you know, a lot of times it's, it takes more than just the offensive line, but I don't think those backs really had a lot of opportunities. A lot of times. They did a pretty good job on first down most of the time, but that second down, there was no, no place to go. Minnesota just 69 rushing yards. This has been a game of passing. A lot of negative yards off a of sack there, though. That is very true. Iowa with five sacks defensively that really have backed up Minnesota at inopportune times. Five hundred and forty eight passing yards between the two teams. This game started with Iowa jumping out 14 nothing. Minnesota battled back and now Iowa that 17 point advantage. We'll see if Minnesota has anything left in the tank. Oh they got stuff left. They, they've shown no quit in them whatsoever. Gone back and forth and. As a, as a bet man Floyd's going back down south down to Iowa City. The all time series Minnesota leads it 62 47 to 2 but Iowa has won 13 in the last 17. 
Well, you hoisted Floyd four years during your tenure in Minnesota, right. right through the middle. Yeah, I think that's right. Not enough for I'd probably still be coaching. Hey. By the way, I saw two of my favorite guys in the Big Ten, Gary Dolphin and Ed Polak, they do radio for Iowa. Good guys, man. Hey, but four times hosting, hoisting Floyd, that's still pretty good in this series. That's over the head of Rashad Bateman. There's a flag coming in, though, at the end of this, in the secondary. They might get Julius Brents on defense. Holy defense number 32. 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. No, instead it's Jimon Colbert. Got the wrong guy, he says. Colbert, one of those Correction linebackers. Oh, now they just corrected it and they said it is on Julius Brents. Another high arcing spiral. Johnson can't get there. Yeah, they went with the. Call that a cover two breaker. Wide out outside, sat down, the inside guy ran a flag route. Could have been there just a little far. He's the former Iowa player that used to be able to throw that better than anybody, our colleague, Chuck Long. Yeah. Bar none in college football, he could throw that route. A legend in Iowa till this day. And forever, Chuck Long. And a BTN legend. 57 seconds to go here at TCF Bank Stadium. Anthony Nelson with a tackle. And as they get it out to the 35. 30 second charge, timeout, Minnesota. And their third and final timeout. Minnesota takes their last timeout. Iowa fans chanting, let's go, Hawks. I don't think they're going to rip the goalpost down like they did at the Dome oh, in 02, though. You had to bring that up again. Well, huh? I, you know, I tell you, you're, <laughs> you're something. You told me I couldn't pick up a cup of coffee. I was so weak. You know? I was being honest. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, ooh, a hard hit at oh, the end of that. And flags goes. coming in. Oh, boy. Amani Jones. Yeah, that's going to be targeting. Who's on the. PJ Flick ran all the way out on the middle of the field. Well, he hit Chris Ottman Bell hard. We'll have to get another look at this. Let's watch it right here. Oh, yeah, he ducked. Well, he did the shoulder. He hit his shoulder. Two fouls on the play. Personal foul, hands to the face by the offense. Personal foul, targeting on the defense. The ruling of targeting is under further review. They're offsetting fouls on the play. Personal foul, hands to the face. Offense number 72. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 52. The ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. Those fouls offset. However, number 52 is disqualified from the game. Repeat, third down. So they confirm targeting, which means Imani Jones will miss the first half of next week's game at Indiana. Well, you know, some of these are clear cut, some are, but I, I really think what we've done in college football has made the game safer. That's also tough because of the linebacker situation. He had Hockaday go out earlier. Nick Neiman is out with the injury. If Amani Jones now not being able to play in that first half against Indiana, they're going to be short staffed at linebacker. And we resume play as Annex Dead swings it downfield. It is intercepted again. Geno Stone, first career pick for the sophomore from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. You know, Brandon, the Hawkeyes had 21 interceptions last year. They haven't had many this year. Well, they're starting to catch up real quick now. Four picks for this Iowa defense. They had two all season coming into today. He got hit just as he threw the ball, but again, desperation throws. Geno Stone all smiles, and the Floyd of Rosedale is going to stay in Iowa City.
They do put Ottman Bell, who took that hit from Jones, in the medical tent. And as Stanley goes down to a knee. And Kirk Ferentz and P.J. Fleck shake hands as Iowa makes it four straight wins in this series. 48 to 31 the victory. And Nate Stanley 314 yards four touchdowns as Iowa did it mainly through the air. Yeah their their running game left a lot to be desired let's face it. I think Kirk Ferentz, Brian Ferentz would be the first ones to tell you that. Yeah, 2.7 yards per rush, but all in all, off the bye week, you're 4-1. and 